Hey guys, Ian the Virtual Reality Ginger here. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Dr. Mark Sturm. Um, and uh, today we're gonna be slapping a headset on him, the Oculus Rift. He's never been inside of a virtual reality headset. Uh, but how long have you been practicing optometry now, Mark? About five years. So, uh, so Mark owns his own optometry clinic and he also owns his own optical. Uh, and so he's got a really good sense, you know, compared to us, the average folk, uh, of, of what his eyes are doing, how they're compensating, what the lenses inside the headset are um, causing him to do. You know, we all know these headsets are tricking us into seeing distance, into seeing vision, um, and, and uh, much further away than, you know, Obviously, we're not, we don't feel like we're looking at a screen that's right here in front of our face. Um, and so Mark's going to talk to us about kind of what that magic that's happening in our eyes is and um, how it's compensating, how it's reacting, how it's acting. And uh, so we're going to get this headset slapped onto him here. I'm going to step off camera because there's just no sense in me crowding mm -hmm. Mark for no reason. Uh, and uh, I'll step off camera really quick and you'll hear me asking questions and prompting him off camera. But otherwise, you'll just uh, see the footage of what's happening in the game and hear what Mark's telling us his eyes are doing. You ready to go? Let's do it. All right. To be honest, even you know when we were when we were setting up uh, before we even flipped the screen on here, uh, I can feel my eyes, you know, working pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, even even through some of the setup stuff. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. So so tell us a little bit. Um, okay. So let's look at that that HUD that heads up display on your on your helmet. The the kind of graphics around the helmet, not that, but look down and kind of to oh, the left yeah. and right. Tell us what your eyes are doing when you look at those. Uh, to the left, into like that bottom left circle right there. That's really close to your face. Oh man, I tell you what. Uh, actually, initially when I look at it, it's all double until until your brain figures out the cue that the eyes have to actually converge significantly, and then I can bring that double into single. But um, I mean, you're looking at a lot of these gauges too long, man. You get a uh, you might get a headache. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, and what about anybody? Let's... Anybody that thinks 30, 30 some hours of this is easy. Uh, We'll see how many of those show up on the internet, right? <laughs> so, 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 okay, let's talk about mid-range stuff uh -huh. now. So you see those objects floating there. Yeah, mid-range stuff is pretty easy. I mean, uh, naturally, your eyes are, are going to be parallel. So anything out um, mid mid-range or out distance are, are very easy to. So you're not your eyes aren't really converging to see those. Right? No, not really. There's a little bit of convergence because the eyes have to differentiate. Like if I look straight ahead. You know, I can tell that 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 uh, bottle is floating ahead of the rest of the stuff, but there's other cues. You see, there's it's called it's parallax. There's other cues that this machine, that this uh, system uses to tell where things are. So you see those two little dots right there, right? Uh -huh. If I go up and down, you can see which one's in front of the other. You can see them getting closer and further away. It's you. There, there's a lot of cues that the that, that the brain uses to so, tell what is, uh, you know, what's closer, what's further away. So, um, and what about? What about distance? I assume that's even easier on your eyes, right? Oh yeah. Oh, but yeah. like looking at the Earth down below yeah, you but, right now. But but then again, I mean, you you you're still, your your eyes are still working together a little bit. I, uh, if I had to guess, if I were to look at the you know look down there the whole time, I'd be just fine. But when I start looking at some of this over here, yeah, or start looking at some of this near stuff, that's when it starts to get a little tasking it's in the uh, visual it's system. It's tough. Yeah, I could feel my eyes straining pretty bad when I did that. Oh. Get over here, and I tell you what, I, I keep. I don't know if you can see the rest of my body, but I keep getting a little bit off balance. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Happened to me too. You died. I died. Yeah. I'm, I'm that's okay. You're at the beginning of the game. That's. You know, I didn't get to that cooler beer over there. Yeah. I would have uh, been fine. So, I'll, so let's talk a little bit about. Um, and how do you say it again? It's not Fresnel. That's how a lot of people. Are uh, uh, Fresnel. Fresnel. Okay. Fresnel prism. Yep. So the Fresnel lenses. What are those doing to make what's happening in your eyes right it's, now? Yeah. How are those functioning? You, you know, my uh, my thoughts is that what that does is that they're just a lot of uh, microscopic prism. Uh, prism essentially uh, kind of bends bends the light a little bit, so it's able to give you just a wider field of view out there. Um, you do have to be centered into these things. If you were to have the head set too low or too high, mm -hmm. um, you know you're definitely going to not see clear out towards the edges, and uh, that's one of the things I figured out real quick when we initially set the uh, the headset on is, is you have to be centered pretty good, that, and that's because of the the, the Fresnel prisms. Okay. And so um, now, uh, am I understanding correctly that those lenses essentially give you a really, um, uh, I don't, I, you would know the better way to say it, but they essentially give you a really 
uh, they're compensating for farsightedness, correct? No, no, no? they're actually they're from what from what I'm guessing. And of course, this is the first time put it on or played with it or anything. Uh, you know, it's it's letting you see that that the very very wide view that you've got here versus. You know, if you were to look through a pair of binoculars, you've got limited view, peripheral view. Uh, the Fennel prisms uh, are giving you that, uh, you know, that expanded, you know, how, I don't know how many degrees this is. I'm sure, sure it's listed in the specs, but there's, uh, there's, there's quite a field of view here. Yeah, there's, uh, a, there's some contention as, as uh, where the field of view ranges, I think, mainly from 100 to 110 degrees. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But it's, it's more than enough to be immersed. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And see, yeah, and, 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 so, and you may or may not know the answer to this question, and that's fine, but is there anything that, say your, um, your eyes are converging really badly, can, do you know if that can uh, basically put you into motion sickness more quickly? There were times where I felt where my eyes kind of had to go cross-eyed really quickly to keep up with an object and then had to bounce, rebound back really quickly. Uh, it, you know, it really depends because uh, it's the same scenario as looking at like, like the hand in front of your face and then looking at the distance, uh -huh. something far, far away at the distance, or let's say you're driving a car. Look at your phone. Look at the look at look at the look at the road. Look at your phone. I mean, your focal system and, and conversion system have to keep changing, and especially the way this is set up. So if I'm looking at some of this stuff here, I mean, man, my eyes are really going to have to bring bring themselves in uh, quite a bit, and depending on what kind of game you're at, whether or not you're it's really tasking your system or not. Uh, you know, it, this is pretty. Th to be honest, this is you know not too terrible because if I want to, I can just you know keep looking out to the distance. I don't have to do a whole lot. If I want to be, uh, you know, pretty active and look at my panels back out to the distance to my panels here, um, you're going to get pretty, uh, pretty tired pretty quick, I think. Yeah. And so I, I think it really depends on the type of game, uh, you know, how, how long you could really uh, handle it without starting to become fatigued or, you know, even getting a headache or, or, mm -hmm. or you know, anything else that would go on with uh, tasking the the eyes like you're doing so and and I want to so and I should preface this next question as well by saying I don't want you you're not committing to anything by answering this I know that you haven't done any long-term studies there really haven't been any long-term studies done on this so you're not going to be held to you know mm -hmm. whatever medically to whatever you you answer here mm -hmm. but um, if you had based on what you're experiencing right now do you see any any risk of long-term vision damage or damage to the eyes or too much eye strain causing damage um, due to what's happening inside of the headset right now, I don't see any long-term uh, damage happening. But like anything, you know, I've got I've got those patients that are that are accountants that are you know data entry patients. They work they they work they're they're on their computer or they're they're uh, you know they're doing near near work all day. It's you know you fatigue that system for how many hours a day uh, without taking any breaks. I mean, you're, for most of those most of those patients, it's it's, it's usually headaches and eye strain. Yeah. You know, typically, so. Uh, and, and to be immersed into this, I'm, ass <laughs> I'm assuming it can sneak up on you pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see any long-term uh, damage, uh, t to be honest Excellent. with you. Now, there's other, there's other factors, and, and you know, there, others might argue. Uh, there's the blue light thing. There's the, you know, you're always going to hear that argument. I yeah, let's talk, let's talk about the blue light thing really quickly, because there's, you know, some people are aware of it, some are not. So let's talk about what the, the contention, what the controversy there is, and, and why, why people say blue light can blue light the, the visual spectrum of course you know Roy G Biv it's the rainbow it's that's the you know white light that we can see that spectrum uh, the blue light is, is 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 at the end of that spectrum that is the higher energy uh, light and that is what's said to you know uh, possibly cause uh, you know more damage with like macular degeneration and acceleration of cataracts things like that our electronics uh, emit uh, that blue light. So you'll see a lot of, you know, different coatings and stuff come out. You know, computer glasses, they've got the blue block coatings on there. They're just blocking that specific spectrum of the, visu of the, uh, of the, the visual spectrum. And, you know, Ian, you had a pair of those glasses that we, uh, we, we'd fit on you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you use for those, you know, 30 some hours. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you know, is there a proof that I, I saved you from damaging your eye? Uh, maybe that'd be hard to prove. But there is proof that uh, you know that blue light is more damaging uh, than the rest of the visual spectrum. Gotcha. So, gotcha. So why not err uh, on the side of caution? Yeah, kind of you know, if you've got a choice between you know regular glasses and uh, you know a, a, a set with uh, some blue block coating on it, um, 
I, I would have blue uh, blue block coating on it for sure. Okay. Absolutely. And so um, I don't want you, you know, whirring around here all evening, but I, I do want to ask you, you know, one more thing here. Uh, if you get a headache, you get a, a headache or eye strain um, from using the headset too much, what should you do? Should you take a break? And if so, how long? Yeah. And, and you know, and, and I, I have the same conversation with my patients that have issues. They say, well, hey, I'm on, I'm in front of the computer for 12 hours a day. You know, I have headaches, I have issues. Uh, you know, I give them a couple options. You can, you, I can give you a pair of glasses that can help focus uh, a little bit for you. It doesn't do all the focusing for you, but it, you maybe do 20% of it for you, and so your eyes don't get as tired. Uh, or you can start taking breaks. You know, every, you know, every half hour, take five minutes. Go grab a drink. Uh, go, you know, take take a walk around the uh, the uh, office or something. Just take a break. Let the eyes reset for a little bit, and then go back to work. Same thing with with, with doing this. Uh, I think if if I was immersed doing this for a couple hours straight. I think I, knowing me, I probably have a pretty good headache. Yeah. To be honest okay. With you. Uh, and and for me, I like to pause it, go grab a drink, you know, hang out for just a second, and then maybe come back to it, and then I'm going to feel a little bit more refreshed. And so, um, so say someone kind of pushes through that eye strain for too long. Can there can the muscles in their eye, just like if you worked out too hard the day before, can they feel sore the next day, day after? Uh, they, they, they can. They can. And um, is, is that anything to worry about? If no, that does no, you're not gonna you're not gonna permanently damage them, but. Uh, I mean, like I said, I've got I've got patients that work, you know, 12 hours a day, six days a week straight, and they're, that's all. They, they're just, they said, there's nothing I can do to make myself feel better. I usually throw a pair of glasses, but if they don't take, if they don't do one of those things, they're always going to feel fatigued. They they feel like they've been hit by a truck by the end of the day. They're tired. Mm -hmm. Their focusing system kind of breaks down where it starts to focus in and out and doesn't really work uh, correctly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I can focus on this little bag here in front of me, right? Uh, you know, those patients, they'll notice that they just, they're not able to focus correctly at the end of the day doing that. So, uh, although no permanent damage, um, you know, at the time you're going to, you're definitely going to have some symptoms. But gotcha. Gotcha. I'd like to tell the kids there that, you know, their eyes are going to go crossed, uh, and, and they won't be fixed, but <laughs> I'm sure parents would love me to tell them that. And yeah. I actually have parents that'll probably try to bribe me to do that. Yeah. But, uh, that's not the case. Okay. Yeah. So, Do you have any other thoughts? Anything else you're experiencing you want to share? You think is I think we've been pretty thorough here, but anything else you want to cover? I don't think so. I don't think so. Other than like I said, I can feel my eyes are they're they're getting beat up here a little bit. I can tell they've been working for a while. So, so. your advice to I'm, people that are I'm, feeling eye strain is it, take a quick break, it, grab it, a drink, come back to it. Yep. All right. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, thanks so much. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and sign off here and do something interesting in the video whenever I edit it, of course. But uh but thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you for hopping in. I hope you enjoyed it, and, and uh, thanks for your insight. Wow. My legs. <laughs> <laughs>